In this tutorial, we'll be looking at the Lift program, which is in the bonus adventure, which you can download from the companion website. The Lift reuses the electronics that you created in Adventure 5, plus some extra buttons, to create a fully functioning Lift in Minecraft. A Lift which you can call, and it will come to your floor. Once you step on the Lift, you can then use the buttons to pick the floor that you want to go to, whether it's the ground floor, the first floor, the second floor or the third floor. The lift will then move, taking the player with it. Before we dig into the program, let's, let's see the lift in action. The lift is created just as an empty lift shaft right next to the to the player. The diamond blocks show you show you where the, where the floors are and also allow you to call the lift by hitting the diamond blocks with the sword. But when I hit the diamond blocks for that floor the lift comes up and the player can then step onto it. By using the buttons I can then choose the floor I want to go to. The seven segment display shows the floor that, I'm, that, the, that the lift is currently on. So let's go to the second floor. The seven segment display shows that I'm going up and when I reach my floor shows that I'm on the second floor. And down. Before we look at the program, let's have a quick look at the electronics. We're using the same breadboard and buttons, seven segment display that we used in Adventure 5. In this example I'm using a Pro Micro Arduino but you could, if you're using a Raspberry Pi, have a Pi Cobbler or similar. We've got four buttons to control the lift and a seven segment display to show what floor we're on and whether we're going up or down. We're also using resistors for both the buttons and the seven segment display for the buttons to provide a pull up to stop random signals being created that our computer would recognize as key presses and resistors on the seven segment display to restrict the current that's flowing to the LEDs so that, so that they don't burn out. It's important that you get everything connected up correctly, otherwise the program won't work, making particular attention to making sure that the components are correct, connected to the right pin on either your Arduino or your Pi Cobbler. Now let's take a look at the program and see how it connects our electronics to Minecraft. The first thing our program does is import some modules it needs. The next thing our program does is sets up our hardware, in my case using the Arduino on a PC or Mac, or if using a Raspberry Pi, the settings are slightly different. We then create some constants which, which describe the lift, for example how many floors we want that lift to have and what the height of each floor should be. We also then create some cons constants for the states that our lift can be in, whether it's going up or down or whether it's stopped. The first thing we do is connect to Minecraft and get the player's position because we're going to create the lift right next to the player. And we create some constants for the position of our lift. 
and we also set its state so that it's stopped and what its current position is in this case right at the bottom. The lift program is very similar to the crafty crossing program from Adventure 9 in that it uses a series of functions to make it work and then a main program then calls those functions in order. There are a number of functions, the first one being create lift which as, this, as described creates the lift. The next one being draw lift which when called will draw the lift in the right position. We've also got a function called player in lift. And what player in lift does it says if the player is standing on the lift pad return true otherwise return false and we'll use this to determine whether we should move the lift. If the player is not standing in the lift we don't move it. We have a function called move up to move the lift up and a function move down to move the fun to move the lift down. We have another function called get floor which returns the floor that we're currently stand that the, 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 the lift is currently on. A new function called check requests which checks to see whether the lift should move either because a button has been pressed or because the player has requested a lift to come to their floor by hitting the diamond blocks. We have a function called at floor which tells us whether the lift is at that floor. A function called choose next which returns whether the lift should be going up or going down. We then have two functions, one called manual lift and one called auto lift. Our program uses auto lift which moves which is the automatic program which moves moves the lift either either up or down. And finally, we have a function called destroy lift, which at the end of the program removes the lift from Minecraft. Our program then has a main game loop. And the main loop calls the functions that are defined above in the right order to make the lift work. The first thing it does is it sets up the GPIO. And it then creates buttons by setting the GPIO pin to be input. We then display the floor that we're on before creating the lift shaft and drawing it. We then loop forever checking to see whether there's any requests so as has the player pressed the button or have they requested the lift and we then called auto lift to move the lift. At the end of the program we clean up the GPIO and destroy the lift. Now let's see the lift in action. I've created a shiny iron and glass skyscraper for my lift. So let's run our lift and create a lift in my new skyscraper. And here it is. All the way to the top of my building. If I'm up on the second on, on the first floor, I can call the lift by hitting the diamond blocks and the lift comes up. I can then step on the lift and press the button to go to the second floor. <laughs> 